fancy mic doing tonight. I'm gonna adjust the camera just a skosh, perhaps a skosh and an eighth. There we are. Oh, we're still a little off center. We'll just move some knives around. They don't make life a lot easier than moving the make freaking camera easier. again. And I got my again. my got thing my... on to God. Ah! Sorry about that. Welcome to Bruising Blades, everybody. Usual. Wouldn't wouldn't be a Bruising Blades if there weren't hiccups when I turned the camera on, right? How's everybody doing? It's good to see everybody. Hey, Mark Mole, how's it going? I thought you made the last one too. Thought you were on there. Maybe I've just been chatting with you on the Discord so much that I feel like you've been there. Uh, get the usual announcements out of the way. First and foremost, thank you very much to Indiana Knives, whose logo you can see half of there. Oh, you can see all of it on your screen. You can only see half of it on mine. Uh, there is a link to them down below. Click on that. You get a 10% discount at checkout. It only shows up at checkout. Keep that in mind. Um, some people click on it and say it doesn't work. It, it does work. It just shows up at checkout. Cat, My cat has been on my desk again. Um, also, uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, click that join button down there. You get access to the Discord, which gives you 24-hour early access to all of my sales. And stuff is usually gone. That's why I don't do sale videos as much. I did a sale on the community page this last time. I might start doing them on the community page. They actually worked pretty well. I still sold almost everything in a reasonable amount of time, and it wasn't that huge flood of everything like it like it usually is. So uh, that's when I do the video. So that was actually, that worked. So yeah, click the join button down below, but also keep an eye on the community tab, which is probably up yonder way somewhere. And also Patreon, same thing, 24 hour early access to the uh, to the uh, sales, and you also get access to the Discord there as well. Discord, a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Um, it's gonna, it's gonna be a blast. So uh, it, it already has been, and it will continue to be. I've really much enjoyed the Discord. Uh, we do have another terrible movie night coming up. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, we had a very lengthy Formula One discussion today because the F1 race was crazy, and there's a subsection for F1. Uh, and yeah, there's knife talk too. Uh, lots of knife talk, and you can sell your stuff there. People seem to be doing really well with the sales on there. I notice a lot of stuff goes up and is sold uh, very, very quickly. Uh, Mark, well, what is the movie that's this time? I believe it is going to be Hercules, which was the first Arnold Schwarzenegger appearance or something like that. I think it was, I, I didn't pick it this time. I let uh, Bennett pick it. Hopefully he'll be on here. Um, I let Bennett pick it this time, uh, and I, I believe it's I believe it's Hercules, like an old nineteen eighties something Hercules, um, and it's he just searched for like you know free movies on YouTube and like and it's it's it looks it looks delightfully terrible. So Hercules in New York, Bennett says, yeah, is that the first Arnold Schwarzenegger? Is that what you said it was? Um, yeah, so that'll be the the movie I think this time. So um. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. I just gotta gotta schedule it. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I intentionally go into these movies without having watched them. That's the best way to do it. Uh, also, super chats open if you want to kick anything in. That'd be very much appreciated. And I was hoping to have an exact date to tell you guys this, but I don't know if we're gonna do it midweek or it's gonna be the next Bruise and Blades next Sunday. But um, gonna be a very 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 special live show coming up either midweek or the next Bruise and Blades at the latest. So um, don't want to, don't want to give any details out except for that. It's a, it's a personal thing and um, that'll be up uh, middle of this week or on Sunday. I'll let you know. So, uh, but please tune into that uh, when you see, I'll make sure everybody knows ahead of time. I'll notify you every possible way. I'm going to try and use that community tab a lot more. So do keep an eye on that. I'm actually, one of the things I want to talk about tonight and get y'all's opinion here too while we're in the live stream. Um, I'm I'm going to do a, a poll on the community page where you can vote, um, and I encourage you to do that even if you even if you do say uh, on here. Um, I have been just due to life circumstances going down to videos every other day instead of religiously doing a video once a day. Um, how do you guys feel about that? It hasn't it hasn't changed my subscriber rate at all, which means it sucked since January. Honestly, everybody takes a dip in January, and like no knife channels have come back very well except for MC. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a stick with the every other day. It's easier, but 
I could definitely still do the every day. The two a days, that's probably never coming back. But um, I'm going to do a, a poll of what you guys feel about that. Um, if you think every other day is fine or you want to go back to the one a days, or I'll put the option to do the two a days. But the two a days, I'd have to, there'd have to be some financial incentive to do the two a days, honestly. That's a lot of work. Or if I do too many and you want me to shut up. So there'll be a poll on that. So, uh, and I, and I think if I added more videos, one of the videos I would, if I go back to one a days, one of the videos would be a second live, which I'm not requiring you to be at Keith, but one of the videos would be a second live, like a Wednesday night live. Um, cause that's easy. It's, it, it honestly takes me a lot less time to do a live than it does to do a video. So, um, if I go back to every day, it's going to be uh, a live, one of them. And I'll do like a quick hour-long live, um, like on Wednesdays or something like that. The beer. I have to open my beer. It's been six minutes. Not a record for the longest I've forgotten to open a beer on the show, but it's getting there. I think, again, this might be third week in a row with a Hamburg Lakeview Lager. I bought a 12-pack of it, so I still have it. And I really like it. And it was raining today, and my AC's not working, so I didn't want to drive... Um, I didn't want to drive with my windows down in the rain because it was raining in 70. Keith, yeah, that's another thing, too. If, if I do more videos, I have to raise Keith's pay by 100%. Jeremy Russell, seven knives for, sake in, for sale in the Discord now, including a very well-priced hinderer. Oh, cool, Jeremy. I didn't see your post that you had some for sale. G ball at the in-laws rain in PA here most of the afternoon. Yeah, I noticed it was like most of the most of the New York, Pennsylvania area rained all day. Dan Brock, how's the rib? Uh pretty good, honestly. Pretty darn good. Um this morning my ankles hurt like hell. <laughs> so I don't know what that was all about. Both of them. It must have been a rainy day thing or something. I've never hurt, injured an ankle severely. I don't know why, but when it rains, my ankles hurt. Zach stuff, paying benefits. Keith gets benefits. He just doesn't take advantage of them a lot. I offer to let Keith get stuff that's hard to get, and he always says no. I've tried. I've tried to give Keith benefits, but he doesn't do it. Every time I get offered a knife that is hard to get, I always say, hey, Keith, do you want one too? And he says no. Vic Fredette, when is the next stand-up? Most of the summer, honestly, I'm just doing um little like one nighter bar gigs and corporate stuff. Trying to do um more corporate stuff when I can because it's uh it pays well. No, no sexy benefits. Uh Josh Wilson, I'm loving my nimble number 69, so fidgety and sharp as hell. You got a number 69? I have a 69 of the uh the Slender Man. Mine's not numbered. Are some of them numbered? Thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate it. Yeah, Super Chat is open. Not expected, but always very much appreciated. That's another reason why I've been going to knives, knife reviews every other day is because uh, because of financial stuff. I just haven't been able to afford to buy as much stuff as I used to. Um, so that's why. I'm going to be starting to ask for loaners. I'm probably going to start it out on the Discord and hope that I get enough there. But if not, you may see some stuff on my Instagram, whatever. Um... MC does it. It works well for him. Just giving a list of stuff that I would like to get in on loaners. Um, I think most people will attest I get them back pretty quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, this tough. I got it in. I reviewed it the day that I got it because it was still available and I didn't know how long it would still be available. And it's going back to the guy tomorrow. So, um, yeah, that's... Uh, I usually try and turn loaners around within a week. Um, I don't like to have them for a long time. But I need to know when they're coming. That's kind of... For scheduling purposes... That's why I haven't asked for him before, but um, uh, Jeremy Russell, you didn't miss much. It's the same sale you saw on Instagram. Okay. Uh, how's the EMP EDC treating you? Very well. Actually, it almost made most carried this month, even though I have not had it the whole month by any stretch of the imagination, but um, I, it did almost make it this month. Uh, it is a, a super cool fidgety knife. It finds its way into my pocket a lot, and it cuts very well. It's very thin behind the edge. It's very well built. I think it looks cool. I really like it. Uh, check the backspace for the number. Oh! Maybe I did know this. It's 004. At least I have a low number. It's not cool like 69, though. I do have... It's within reach. I did 
ask for number 69 on my Slender Man, though, because I am a child. Noise. But, oh, number 69 Nimble would have been awesome. But I think when he sent this, it wasn't... Uh, um, they were nowhere near number 69. I would have had to have waited a little while. Uh, yeah, the tough is the DLT exclusive. I did a whole video about it. Um, yeah. I don't know from the comments. It seems like a lot of people really like theirs. I hadn't heard a big uproar about people wanting it back, but apparently some people did. And it's interesting. But, oh, 315 bucks. Zoinks. Um, not crazy for a spider co anymore, unfortunately. But, um... Uh, Knife Eclectic, still trying for anything number 42. Yeah, the l answer to life, the universe, and everything. Uh, big, in big Green Knife won't fit in the screenshot. Nope, not even close. It's a big one. The Spider Coat Tough. I don't know. I People seem to really like them. I'm glad that I did I did look at some other like opinions about them online before I did it. I probably would have been less kind to it. But I did realize a lot of people do really like them. I do love the coating on this blade, though. This is awesome. Titanium something or other. Titanium nitride something or other. It's a really long, complicated name. But I hadn't gotten a spider coat with this coating on it before. And it is really awesome. Hey, Samurai, how's it going? Have you had the Civivi bow in your hands yet? No. I don't even know which one that is. Um... Ty CN. Yeah, I was trying to think of what it titanium carbon nitride or whatever. Thank you very much for the donation, Arugula. Uh, what steel would you want for an Akuchi sprint? Um, oh, in the Akuchi. Uh, oddly enough, in really, I love the Akuchi, by the way. Great knife. Um, in the, in really like small, um, small knives like that, I like a really, really hard steel because you just don't ever have to sharpen them. Because it wouldn't be something I was cutting a lot of stuff with. Um, and I think I'd like S90V. Even though it's a pain in the butt to sharpen, I wouldn't be sharpening it very much at all. So thank you very much, Harold Cook, for the donation. I appreciate that. I do believe I missed one of your super chats whilst I was rambling. So let me scroll back here and see. Uh, that fellow there, sword check now for the nunchucks you always wanted. I had some as a kid, actually. Uh, I, I hit... My, I had, like, padded ones. My cousin and I had them. My, my uncle bought them for us, which was a really dumb idea, and we just used to beat the snot out of each other with these padded nunchucks. They weren't that padded. They weren't padded enough to be hitting each other for as, as hard as we were, that's for sure. Uh, Freedom Van, thank you very much for the very generous donation, 10 bucks. I very much appreciate it. Uh, chipping in since I've missed the past several weeks, addicted to car videos. Oh, I watch a lot of car videos as well. I watch a lot of them. I like me some Hoovies Garage and some Doug DeMuro. And actually, even uh, Daily Driven Exotics has kind of gotten me lately. I don't like modified cars that much. But I don't know. I just find them to be very, very entertaining. They're just entertaining folks. Rab Adaboodoo says, Hi, troops. Hello from Bonnie, Scotland. Thanks for coming. That was not a very good Scottish accent, but I am Scottish. so. Uh, knife collected S one ten V on the coochie coochie would be a slice mustard. That would be great too. I, I think I just it's weird just for like little little small you know knives like that. I like a really super hard ridiculous steel just so I never have to think about sharpening them. That I just know that like when I because my knives I carry all the time and I use for stuff. If it's a steel it gets a little dull. I I notice that it's dull and I sharpen it. But a little small knife like that you don't want to pull it out and realize it got dull. Does that make any sense whatsoever? I just like my little fifth pocket knives to have uh, ridiculously good, um, ridiculous, ridiculously hard steel. Uh, it, the action on the tough is actually pretty good. I heard that the OGs were not great, uh, but Spyderco has gotten a lot better at frame locks since then. So it's pretty good. Uh, what's in the Stein tonight? In the can and the uh, USA made blade warm or uh, yeah warmer, not warmer koozie. Is the same as last week, I think. Ham the Hamburg Lakeview Lager. Jeff Stroh, that thing couldn't be ugly. I mean, it probably could be. It would take an effort. Uh, knife Eclectic, my native is still st uh, stupid sharp. I've heard that you really don't want to let S110V get dull. Yeah, it just takes a while. 
it's not like S110V isn't a steel that like S90V is just frustrating to sharpen. S110V just takes a while. It's, it's it's not that bad, but it's still yeah. It does take a hot minute. I have to sharpen S90V tonight. So I'm thinking about watching the Snyder cut while I uh, while I sharpen my bug out. Um, Keith asks, uh, is the tough on washers or bearings? It's on washers. I guess, but patience, patience, patience. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to... I'm going to allow... The, it blocked that for some reason, Jeremy, but I'm going to allow your post. Yeah, go check out Jeff Russell's sale. He has always has great stuff. Oh, uh, you broke your toe, Beefstick? How'd that happen? I've never broken a toe. I've broken a foot. I've never broken my toe. Rab says, I really like the look of that tough, just trying to justify a use case for it. Yeah, that's the other thing about it. I mean, I don't like the looks either, but it is just kind of awkward. It's comfortable. But just that blade going down, it, for what it's, the guy who designed it, Shemp, right? Yeah, he does, like, cutting competitions and stuff. I totally get it for stuff like that. But just for daily use stuff, I just don't, I don't, it's awkward. Like, even opening a package is kind of awkward. Like I said in the video, I, I never asked for more jimping, but I wish it had, like, another little middle spot of jimping up here. But then I would just always use it like this, where at that point, why do I have this big giant knife? Uh, tough versus 9-pound <laughs> splitting, splitting wall, yeah. Uh, knife eclectic, the coating, that coating reminds me of polished GLC. It does look a lot like polished GLC, you're correct. Why is it blocking everything you say, Jeremy? Well, Keith already allowed it before I could get to it. Jammed in the door and wife forgot to wedge and was tired and sleepy working at night and thought someone was breaking and jumped out of bed and jammed it in the door. Ow, oh, damn. Harold Cook says you don't open a package of that. You open a car door. I rarely have to open car doors um, with knives. I open car doors a lot, but rarely with, uh, with, with cutting implements. And sorry to hear that, Jeremy. But yeah, if you're on the Discord, check it out. BD Swaim says, choke back, it really becomes a bushcraft chopper. Yeah, you can tell that's what it was designed to be. But then with the choil, you lose all that length. I don't know. Uh, through the metal, not the handle. <laughs> Harold Cook, you're right. It's a chop up. It is definitely a chopper, but just for, like, the kind of things that I do. It doesn't make any sense for any of my use cases. I think I was fairly kind to it in the review because I saw a lot of people do really love it. If it was just, like... Because when I review stuff, I try to review it, like, for other people. I don't try and review it just for me. And um, if I was reviewing it, reviewing it just for me, I'd be like, huh? Um, and it would not have been a very good review at all. But I saw other people... Like a moment, second from the right, uh, this is the EDC EMP, uh, EMP EDC Nimble. I always get those two confused. I did a video on it. Um, almost a kukri. It is. It is very kind of kukri-ish, kukri-esque. My wife looked at it. I showed it to her and, uh, and she goes that. That big groove is for blood, isn't it? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, yeah, I thought so. Uh, the Ryan Powers 1 bedside Rambo knife. That could be Medford's slogan. I don't know, Medford makes some stuff that's very carryable. I had a Slim Mini that was nice to carry. And I think a Micro Praetorium would be pretty nice, but I'm not going to get one, but... They seem okay. My bedside Rambo knife used to always be big, giant, ridiculous cold steels, but um, I don't, I don't have any at the moment. I sold all of them because it wasn't enough to, uh, to kind of, you know, to keep around, um, just to have it sitting there. 
And I'm still hoping someday my wife's going to let me keep my sword by my side of the bed. But so far, we're not there yet. But hopefully, hopefully we'll get there. When the riots were happening, she let me keep a machete by the side of the bed. I didn't own the sword at the time, or she probably would have. But uh, I had a machete by the side of the bed during the riots. But then I was told to put it away after a while. She was, I think we're safe now. You can put that away. Joshua Wilson says they have some sharp by design micro Evo typhoons on knife scent. Do they still? I heard about it. That fellow there, if it's mounted, then it's just a court. Yeah, that's what I said. I said lots of people have swords hanging up in their house. And she said, yeah, and they look stupid. Scott and get a sword of her own. She has zero interest in that. I can assure you of that. BD Swing. They had gone now. Yeah, I couldn't imagine they lasted very long. I didn't know. Didn't Bennett, didn't you get one? Uh, Bennett Wilcox went to vape shop, checked out knife selection, MTEX and Wartex in a cold steel. Yeah, it's that that's where I when I give away stupid crazy knives, which I need to do that again. I get them at my vape shop. Not I go to a fancy vape shop now, I should say. They don't have knives. I upgrade it to a very fancy high class vape shop. And the kid who's always working there has a pristine like brand new looking 1996 Camaro red with t-tops and manual it looks like it just rolled off the assembly line it's got like eighteen thousand miles on it i just love just seeing it like that it's there the pristine 98 camaro t-top it's just cool but anyway i go to that one now but the old one i used to go to yeah they had terrible 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 uh knives and that's where i would just go in and buy like four of them and then you know give them away to you guys liquid clouds no end in henrietta it has an ominous name to end. Uh, what's my favorite vape book? I use this uh, Naked uh, Euro Gold. I used to like this stuff from Tsunami that was also a tobacco. I like just a plain tobacco flavor. No no flavor at all is my preference. I liked Tsunami better. Uh, slightly better. Not much, but slightly better. But Tsunami is like no longer really available. I guess they're not technically out of business, but it's really hard to get and... G ball the in-laws. I oh, buddy, that's not even one eighth of it. I had a gun problem before I got back into knives, but 22 guns in 16 months. Wow, that's a lot. Uh, that fellow there, is there such a thing as a fancy vape shop? There, this one actually is. I should take pictures. It's really nice inside. <laughs> like it's really, it looks like a it honestly does look like a mid-level jewelry store. It's very, very fancy. That fellow there, in your honor, Brian, and like a bowl of Cornell and Deal. I don't know what that is. Jerry Russell, Bad Mogger, Fogger, Buster is my all-day vape. Is it? Is it just like, I, I just like really, I don't want flavors. I don't want to have like watermelon mango and then try and sit down and eat my lunch. I just want my freaking nicotine and I don't care. Jimmy Russell. There are many fancy vape, really fancy vape shops. Yeah, and there was not there was another one that was in on Monroe Ave. I can't remember the name of it, but they're gone now. But yeah, there's uh, I like it. I like the the, fan, the fancy ones, and that's where I bought this vape that has. You can just buy them on the internet, but it's a smock Nord Four, but it's the fancy one with leather on it. It's real leather, but it says it's Italian leather. I think it's probably from the Italia region of China. I don't think it's real. I don't think it's like real Italian leather, but still, it, it has leather on it anyway. Cheap old in-laws. I have a, a addictive personality. Comes to shit like that. My vape shop is pretty fancy. He had a vape bar. Yeah. It, what's 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 really bad about vapes is once you're in, they're cheap, and you go in to buy your vape juice, and like this big thing of it costs like twenty bucks, and then it's like another forty bucks to get a whole new vape, and you're like, ah, I'll just I'll try something new and. That's the only thing I like about going in the shops is you wind up walking out more than you want. But it doesn't cost a lot. Welcome aboard, K. Mason. I very much appreciate it. All right, let's stop talking about vapes, get back into knives. I, could, I brought out some stuff tonight that I've just been carrying a lot. Um, these two were in my most carried for last month. Uh, this one almost made it. And this, this, one I actually, this one is actually sold. It sold to a really good friend of mine, so I knew he wouldn't care if I brought it out. Um, but I just did a review of this. This is the... Asher Knives Spiro with the frame lock. And now they have a full titanium one. This one is just a G10 on one side, but really nice knife. I'm very happy that my 
My buddy bought it. What's a second from the left? This is the uh, Spyderco Sage 1 Maxinet, which is pretty much, honestly, EDC-like perfection. I'm not the first one to say that. I can't remember who else did a review. that said They did a review and it said EDC perfection with a question mark. Was it Dr. Frunky? Was it Frank? I can't remember. Because I know he has one and loves it as well. But um, just for something to carry and use all the time, it's pretty darn, pretty darn good. Knife Eclectic. I thought the Asher was an MBK Old Guard at first. That came up. That's the second time that's come up in conversation in as many days. That's one I have never checked out. Never checked out an Old Guard. I don't know why. I haven't had many MBKs at all. Uh, same here. I want to see the knocks in the hand. I didn't see that. I did a whole video on it. Um, you can choke up on it a little bit. And honestly, I do use it like that a lot because it is kind of a dainty little thing. But it fits all four of my fingers fine. I have fairly skinny fingers, but... Free State Fellow, the MBK Old Guard is a fine-looking piece. They are. They're great. Beefstick, thoughts on Painty X Series? They're all right. I, I mean, I always like them a lot. I just haven't ever bothered to, to buy one. I didn't have... I don't have, like, a hookup to get them as loaners from the factory or anything, so... Um, and they're kind of pricey. I think they kind of, a lot of them kind of look the same, but you can say that about a whole lot of different companies. So, um, Lavender Pants has been busy helping my mom sell the house and find an apartment and all that. Ah, oh, I've been through that, dude. Good luck. Good luck. I wish I had good advice, but I do not. Um, it, it's just, it's tough going through all that. I hope it's not due to a health reason. I hope it's just she wants to downsize. Uh, G ball at the in laws. I have all silver knocks and it's a nice knife. I like the steel. Yeah, I love Nitro V. That's the coolest thing about this thing. Is it's just a unique steel. It's not like the best steel on the planet, but it's it's pretty darn good. It's like you know, I don't know. I put it, I put it in S thirty five VN class. I don't know if the edge retention is as good, but I would put it in that class. And it's just it's very stain resistant. It's pretty easy to sharpen. It's just cool. Knox is really nice. The bow also has Nitro V steel, but Nitro V steel, but with a CF handle. Oh yeah, I did. I do want to get that one. Uh, what's everyone carrying on? You know, we're at ninety four. That's close enough. I usually wait till hundred to do the pocket check, but uh, we'll do pocket checks. Let's do that. Somebody since it already got started. Um, Emerson CQC thirteen. Nice. That's one I actually really like. Um. Uh, Lavender Pants 86, one of your downsides since the past. Well, yeah, that's that's when my mom did it too. Unfortunately, she had health issues that started immediately after, but uh Milwaukee fastback. I'm at work. Yeah, gotta carry what you gotta carry at work. Demco 80 20.5 shark's foot. I wish I had the shark's foot. I gave away the wrong one. I meant to give away this one. I gave away the shark's foot. Because I'm an idiot. Uh Jurassic, very cool. I think that's what I'm gonna carry tomorrow. Spider Co Capara, new to me, very cool. Another Emerson. I don't know if we've ever had two Emersons on here tonight. Tucson TS-226. I have no idea what that looks like because I can't keep up with Tucson's. Uh, 940-2. Great version of the 940. Knife Joy Swish Buoy. Very nice. Carrying a grand around in your pocket, according to the internet. Uh, Maximet PM2. Very cool. Same PM2 I have. Benchmade Valet. I think you've mentioned that in here before because not many people have those and it's a highly underrated knife. Para 3 Maximet. That's the version of Para 3 I have. Uh, Feldspar S35. I didn't know they did an S35 Feldspar. That's cool. Boker AK47 Auto. That's a big one. PM2 Rex 45. Mini Micartomorph because it's Sunday. What does that go with? Um, Keith Campbell. I shared a picture of it on Discord. Did I comment on it? I don't remember. Uh, cut shot. Cut Shop Shaman, Lynch Clip, very cool. Cutlery Shop, I assume you mean. Um, 20CV Capara, second Capara. Uh, anyone know when Rock Scale Design is going to get more inventory in the Bug Out Scales? I don't. I'm going to get some titanium, uh, some stuff from a Flytanium, but I need to get another Bug Out because I don't want to take mine apart because mine's the fancy one. So I have to buy another bug out. So I got to make some calls tomorrow and see who I can get a bug out at for from uh, inexpensively. 
which means probably Benchmade. But yeah, hit that like button, everybody. We got what 100 of you on here, and we only have 32 likes. So uh, just swapping over to Presidio 2. Got to get some stuff done tomorrow. Very right, cool. Steel wheel. So, oh yeah, that was steel wheel. No, but it's, it's the might the it's not steel wheel. It's a real steel. Uh, real steel metamorph compact. I have one of those. I like. It. No, I don't have the metamorph. I've got. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what I have. Never mind. Um, Kevin Campbell. I need another bug out for a project too. I just have to call Benjamin and say, "Hey, can you send me another bug out? I'm going to take it apart and modify it. I don't think they're going to care, but." They're very good about sending me stuff, but I'm just going to be honest with them. Like, yeah, it's going to be modded, <laughs> like, on the channel. <laughs> but but Flytanium has those really awesome, what were they called, crossfade scales or whatever? Those new Titanium ones, they look awesome. And they offered to send me some. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to get another bug out, though. I don't want to put them in my carbon because I like my carbon being all nice and light and stuff. So if I can't get another one, I'll do it to my carbon, but I don't, I don't want to. Uh, no mojo. Is that a spider co from Predator? <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's the tough. That fellow there. I liked it just so I can like it again. Thank you, I guess. Everybody else did pocket checks. What did I have in my pocket today? I don't know. Kind of silly because I, I never left my house today. I'm just hanging out around the house. But for some reason, I put on my Sunday best. Carried carried my uh, one of my favorite gentlemanly knives. This was my most carried last month, maybe again this month. Uh, the tactile turn rock wall. I just really like this thing. It's just it just feels so good in my hand. It's it feels tactily. Thank you very much, Clayton Workman, whoever you are. For I assume you're on here right now. Just join the Patreon for the maximum level. So thank you very much for that. I very much appreciate it. But um, yeah, I, I put on my Sunday best today. And I don't know why, I just felt like it. It was like a rainy, crappy day, and I didn't go anywhere. I knew it wasn't going anywhere, but I carried the tactile knife company rock wall and a tactile turn pen that I never used. And I even put on my, like, I don't know, second or third fanciest watch. It's tied for second. This is a Seiko 62 Moss reissue. SPB 147. So I got the, uh, I got this, I've had this strap for a while and never used it. And somebody on the Seiko forums posted a picture of their SPB 147, which is brown. If you can't tell it's in on the dial, it's really kind of hard to find a strap that goes with it. And somebody else posted a picture with this strap, uh, a strap very similar to this. And I thought, Hey, wait a minute. I have one of those and I put it on and I'm finally happy with a strap on this watch. I got it with no strap very inexpensively. And I have not found one that I really liked and now I have one I really like. Mark Mole, it's nice with that black leather. Yeah, somebody's going to scream, scream leather on a diver. I don't dive. And I just had to get this fixed. This got sent off to Seiko and repaired. I bought it used with no warranty, and I knew that. But the guy I bought it from took care of it. He paid for it, which that's awesome. He didn't need to do that. I knew it had no warranty when I got it, and it went, it broke. It wasn't working right. It was just randomly stopping off and on and i sent it off and seiko replaced the movement and he paid for it which i think is uh it's pretty darn cool knife eclectic i'm gonna wager that carry still counts as tactical i don't know i mean it's a dive watch i guess it's not like a dress watch i wasn't wearing something stupid fancy but leather on a diver yeah i don't dive i'm never going to that is not a concern that is never going to be a happen be a happen. <laughs> you. I won't. Uh, someday I'm going to save my. I don't save my bloopers. I should save them. I usually just delete them. But I should save them. Because I call myself a stumble F word all the time. On my uh, bloopers. When I screw up. Uh. I have David Garrett, I have a tactile turn slim mechanical pencil in titanium. Never wanted to have, I never had a need to have pencils. I have some decent ones. I have some zebra ones and stuff, but um, I don't really ever use them. 
He saved the bloopers. So, some of the bloopers are so bad. I say such bad things to myself, though, that I mean really bad. Like, really bad. And I don't know if I'd even want to put them out. I say a lot of... A lot of very colorful words about myself. When I insult myself, I am much ruder than I would ever be to another human being when I insult them. That fellow there, do you play any instruments? I played trombone in high school. I imagine if I picked one up and spent a week with it, I'd probably be tolerable at it again. Um, but no. Other than that, no. I tried to play guitar. Couldn't do it. I own a guitar. I have a fairly decent guitar somewhere. Um, what do I have? I don't even remember. Do I have a Martin? I think I have... I think I have a Martin. Something. I've got something that's fairly decent, but I haven't. I haven't played it forever. No, I don't. I don't have it. I was going to buy it, and then I realized I'm terrible at guitar, and I didn't buy it. That was a, that was an expensive purchase I avoided, and I woke up, and I didn't buy it. <laughs> but uh, my kids all play guitar, and my wife plays guitar, but I don't. I was going to get one of those $500 Martins, and I didn't. I can't remember what my guitar is. I have a cheap one somewhere. That I never play. I have like a $150... Fender, maybe? Something like that. Um, Marmol. I have a Martin guitar. Uh, Scott and Tierra makes guitar picks. Well, now I have to learn. Uh, my real still Phasma standard has been my biggest point. Tons of work to make. Deployment functional. Beautiful knife, though. My Phasma fancy one was nice, and I sold it to the same friend who, who bought... Oh, I just put it away. Who bought the uh, the Asher, and he loves it. I don't remember. Not a lot of Martins under 500. It was like, it's like the absolute most basic acoustic guitar they have. It was like, maybe it was 550, something. It's 500, 550, something like that. It was years ago, too. It was uh, not like decades ago. It's not like it was in the 70s. It was like, uh, oh, what, what would have been when my son was learning 10 years ago? Wow. It's a long time ago. Knife Eclectic found my user acoustic in a little store for 130 and it sings, yeah. My wife has a Yamaha. My son has a Fender acoustic and a Fender Electric. My daughter is in the ukuleles. She's got a couple of really nice ukuleles. My son has a Gretsch ukulele. My daughter has a Luna ukulele. That are supposed to be really good. I don't remember what it... I don't know what my guitar is. I have to ask my wife. It's not a Gibson. I don't think it's a Fender because my son's got one. I can't remember what the hell it is. It's used. I bought it used. and I think it was like 150 bucks, And I don't think it was more than like 200 when it was new. I don't even know. Oh, it's an Epiphany. Uh, the cheap Gibson. I remember now. I have an Epiphany guitar somewhere. I don't even know where the hell it is. That was a really long answer to a very easy question. Sorry about that. Uh, Marcos Gamma just wanted to stop by to hit that like button and say hello, Senor Slicey. Gracias. Very much appreciated. I have collected my nice one as a 70 Gibson pure lucky find. Um, digging the knocks. Yeah, very much so. Like It was just in my most carried knives for last month. It's just... If when I want something slim and gentlemanly, sort of, I it's one of these two. And it probably will be for a considerable amount of time. I really enjoy the Knox. I think it's a great, great knife. Not even just for the price. I think it's just very, very good. Nitro V steel. It's got cool steel. Not cold steel. It's just cool steel. Uh, hi, Brian. What do you think of the Ferrum Forge Stinger at 81 bucks? Awesome knife. Grab it. I still have mine. I got it. And I still have it. And I still carry it. I'm not going to say I carry it a lot, but I carry it occasionally. Again, something lightweight. Stinger's great. Very slicey. Again, Nitro V, I believe. Is it? Isn't it? I believe it is Nitro V and so on and so forth. I do. I do think it is. Uh, 
G ball at the in laws. I'm going to get that 80 20.5 shark's foot as soon as they come back out. I'm probably going to too because I think, again, I'm an adult. I, I said I was going to give away the shark's foot. And then when I packed it up, I just put the wrong one. I was going to give this one away and keep the shark's foot. Now, when I packed it up, I just put it in the wrong, I put the wrong one in the box. And before it even got there, I emailed the guy. I realized it the next day. I was like, oh, son of a monkey. And I said, I get, sent you the wrong knife. That one's been used a lot more. If it's cool with you, you can keep it, but I'll send it and switch back. And he said, no, I kind of wanted the shark's foot. That's totally fine. And I was like, Dow! I was hoping he would say he'll send it back and I'd send him the correct one. But <sighs> hey, so far, so good. I don't want to jinx it. What have we not heard tonight? I was hearing it before the show started, but they stopped. What have we not heard tonight? G ball, you know, they should be coming back out soon, Slice. Hey, yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Demko. I might be like, I'm, I'm supposed to go down there. I just haven't set up a time with them to do it. Uh, yeah, no cops and no dogs. Yes, dog free. I think I figured out what's going on. I posted this theory to my wife this afternoon. She agrees with me. I believe the house behind us, people moved in there about uh, six, eight months ago. So, like, you know, the house that, like, butts up against the back of ours? I believe they foster dogs. I think that's what's going on. Because the dogs are constantly changing, and they're all, all, all extremely well or extremely poorly behaved so i think i think that's what's going on bennett took care of him for me thank you very much i appreciate it but uh stop back scooter what are you doing for national night day when is that that is coming up isn't it i'll do something i'll do i usually do some kind of collection update on national knife day i don't do the whole collection because that would take for Frickin' ever. And it's gonna change like the next day anyway. Uh, the, the 24th. I'll think of something. I'll probably do a giveaway or something probably this time. I don't know what I would do for a collection update. I've been in kind of a selling mode. Kind of a reduction mode. So I'm not sure. Every day should be Bowie Appreciation Day. I agree with that. Uh, most expensive and least expensive full day showdown. Uh, least expensive is really crappy, though. I guess about Cold Steel Code 4 American Law, man. I'd probably take the... I don't know which one I'd take between those two. God, that'd be really tough. 820, according to Google. Okay, so later this month... My daughter moves in on the 22nd, so I'll have to pre-record some. Hey, TPK, how's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, if you can only have one knife for EDC under 150. Man, I don't... I've done that there can be only one, but I don't usually put price categories on them. Um, at the moment, it... No, this is over 150, isn't it? This is like 200. Um, I know, I know it would be a contender. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say this is what it would be, but I know because I know I have it right here, and I was just carrying it the other day. Be pretty high up on a Sage Five. Um, be pretty high up. Oh my god, I was crap all over everything. Oh, I know why. I was vacuuming, and this is in a thing that's at floor level, and probably the vacuum. I wonder why all my knives were dusty and I finally just figured it out. I finally just figured it out. I did get another Spyderco back that, I don't know, maybe you guys will laugh at because I hate Spyderco sprint runs. And I had this one and then I sold it. And then I got another one. <laughs> but uh, um, I, a, a place had had one... 
in stock and I was doing some work with them. So I said, hey, can I get another one of them? So I got another Native Chief S90V. So yeah, that's back. Um, and I don't like I don't like Spyderco sprints, but um, yeah, I've had two of the same one. Uh, that fellow there, what single knife have you repurchased the most? I don't know. I'm going to say the Hinder X-18 doesn't count because I buy different versions. Um, Sage 5 I've bought twice. This Native Chief I've bought twice. Have I ever bought the same version? Yeah, I've bought the same version of 940 twice. I've bought lots of PM2s, but never the same version. Um... Spyderco Canis, but I just already resold it again. <laughs> so I had I had a I had a Canis back for like two weeks and I sold it again. Um, the Chief doesn't fit in the screen either. No, but it carries really well for such a big old knife. That's why I like it. And it's S ninety V and it's the carbon's actually pretty nice and I just really like it. It's my, one of my favorite big old knives. Um. That's one I bought back just for me. Um, I am downsizing my collection a lot, uh, but this is one I really missed. I bought it. I don't normally buy sprints. I bought it just for me. I really enjoyed it. I sold it um, because I just thought, ah, eh, well, you know, whatever. They went up in price for a bit. They've kind of come back down to level now because they were out for quite a while. And uh, I, I sold it, and I bought another. Then I did this one just came up, yeah, on them. On a retailer website that I work with sometimes, and I said, hey, can you send me that? And they said, yeah, sure. So I got another one. It had been sitting on their shelf forever, so they were perfectly willing to send it out. Uh, Free State Phil, Lord, can you imagine the Chief with a compression lock? Oof, yeah, it would be really cool, the compression lock. This thing with a big old compression lock just flicking this giant four-inch blade around. It's, I think it's, yeah, it's four inches, right? I'm measuring it off screen here. Just the blade, nothing else. Um, yeah, it's a little over four inches. It's a big old blade. Just swinging your four inches around. Just slanging four inches of hard steel. Giggity. Yeah, I don't watch that show, but I know what you're referring to. Uh, Will Tool, Axis Lock versus... Spyderco's version. Oh, on the Manix? Um, I, li I like I like uh, the Axis Lock better than the lock on the Manix, but it's still pretty good. The Manix is still one of my favorite ones. Uh, I still want a Rex 45 just so I can say <laughs> I can laser Rexy Beast on the scale. That's pretty funny. Uh, Vic Fredat favorite new beverage for adults i don't keep up on the new stuff anymore i used to be in a beer snob club but um tonight i'm still drinking the same thing i was last week i believe a hamburg lakeview lager perhaps three weeks in a row i bought a 12 pack of it i only have one left after this so next week there will be a new beer and someone on my something community page or discord or something said i should get some good british ales and I'm going with that. So next week, there will be a British ale. I really like a Smittix. Smittix is pretty good. It's not pronounced Smithwicks. It's Smittix. Um, if I can't find anything else, I'll get that. But we have a Beers of the World down the street. That, not down the street. It's like four miles away. But anywho, um, I'm going to go there. Next week will be a British ale of some kind. So if you want to play along, um, buy a British ale. That's what I'll be drinking next week. Uh, William Tool Axis Lock versus Spyderco's version. Which lock is more durable, strong? I'd say the internet is going to say Spyderco's, but I've never had an I've never had a Omega Spring break. I think Omega Springs are something that you either break a crap ton of or you break none of. Uh, I've never broken one. I've had so many Benchmades I can't even count, and I've never broken one. Um, but guys who break them are like, I broke seven. So I, it seems like it's something that people do, and I don't know what it is, but there's something that, that they don't like that some people break them, some people don't. 
Nick for that Penguin or Sog Terminus XR Penguin. Penguin is an outstanding knife. The Terminus XR ain't bad, but um, I don't think it's user error, Sue. That's not what I'm saying. We're not accusing anybody of anything. I think it's just there's some kind of use circumstance that causes people to break them a lot. And I don't know what that is. Um, knife and Collectic. Just get a legit cage lock. That spider kill cue ball. Yeah, I don't like the cue ball one. I don't like the look of it. I like the Manix 2, though. Manix 2 is awesome. Uh, Mark Mole, do we need powder waste? Because I'll drink some La Croix to that. See, I say La Croix. No, you don't need powder wigs. Does everybody else say LaCroix? Am I the only pretentious bastard that says LaCroix? Keith also in the Never Broke a Spring Club. Um, teen's first knife, Odium or Elementum? Oh, that's a good. That's a good one. Depends on depends on how large the teen is. Um, I would say Odium if they're small of hand, and Elementum if they are normal of hand. LaCroix, yeah, my whole family makes fun of me because I say LaCroix. Whatever. Who drinks that stuff? Everyone else in my family except me. Well, I guess that's not fair. I don't think my son drinks it either. My wife and daughter drink it. Uh, TPK, how are you liking that new spider coat tough? Well, I, I did the video, and it's going back on the morrow to its uh, rightful owner. Eh. 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 You can watch the video. Not my jam. Freedom Van. It makes a great mixer with vodka. I could totally see that. TBK, do you also say Tarjay? Only ironically. Drinking a, a LaCroix La and saying LaCroix is next level pretentious. I am next level pretentious. I will admit that. But I don't say Tarjay. Only when I'm trying to make a joke. Um, William Tool, any other interest besides knives? Yeah, a few. I mean, I have a watch channel now, by the way. What you on about? I should have linked it on here. If you're into watches, go check that out. Um, oh, uh, collectible kind of stuff. Um, I really like vintage typewriters, and I use them a fair bit. I only have two, but they're two excellent ones, and I, I guess I have a two typewriter collection that I'm very happy with. Um, I have a pristine... It was new old stock when my wife got it for me, I guess about 10 years ago. Um, a uh, 1938 Royal Deluxe that I love. Royal Aristocrat, sorry, it's not a Deluxe. It's based, same thing as the Deluxe, but a little bit different. And then I have a 1965 Smith Corona Super Sterling, which I just used in a photo on my um, watch Instagram today um the the smith crone is the one i actually use the most the 1938 it's so funny because it's so older but it's still um really stiff and because it's not broken in because it was it was literally new old stock the guy we bought it from oiled it and serviced it but it was it had never been used when i got it it was still like in the original factory packaging what was left of it and then um the smith corona is the one i actually use a 65 smith corona it's awesome. What I like about typing on a typewriter is if you are, it makes you think of the next word because if I type on a typewriter as fast as I can on a keyboard, I can type really, really, really fast. So if I type that fast on a keyboard, it locks up. So it makes you slow down and then you're subconsciously thinking about the next word a lot more than you are if you're typing on a computer, if that makes any sense. If you're into creative writing, I highly recommend you have a typewriter. Even if you don't write everything on it, it's good. Ben Wilcox, did you spend all lockdown typing all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy in your typewriters? No. No. I worked, I pulled out a novel I've been working on for years and I wrote like another two chapters, but it's never going to get done. Uh, Pietro Galini says that is the, the proper French pronunciation of qua. I know it is. That's what I'm saying. Uh, TPK says that alone is therapeutic. Yeah, it is. Uh, William Tool saw the sticker. Are you from Indiana? Because I am. No, it's just a word. This is Blues and Blades is sponsored by Indiana Knives. If you go click a link down below, you get 10% off. 
Check out, uh, Mark Mole, can you get a read along? No. That is something that will never come out until it's done, and it's probably not gonna be done until I'm like, I'm 46 right now. It'll probably be 70 before that thing ever comes out. If it ever does. I have like three, like three novels that I've never finished. I came really close to one of them, but man, that was a lot of work. A historical, historical fiction thing, and that was hard. And then I moved away from Germany, and now I can't really do it anymore. So I didn't get it finished before I left Germany. And he also just stand up, yeah. Just doing corporate stuff right now, which isn't as fun, but you know what? It makes money, and I got to do it. It just since the freaking lockdown ended, every comedian on the planet is scrambling for dates, and and I had quit, not quit. I'd backed way off for two years because my mom was sick. So, I'm trying to remind people that I exist, and I'm getting there. I'm starting to get more stuff. I think by next year I'll be back to having a full calendar. TPK, you're good at stand-up. Color me impressed. Thank you very much. Um. I am going to be doing a show here definitely for you guys, though, in November. So if you guys want to come out and see me in November and you live anywhere near the accessible Rochester area, New York, Rochester, New York area, I will be doing a show for you guys and a, a little knife gathering beforehand. I'm just trying to pick the exact date. Probably going to be on a Sunday, I imagine, which is not the most convenient for traveling, but um, that's probably when we're going to have to do it. Dude, same knife's been on the table for a long time. Okay, okay. You guys usually ask about another knife, and that prompts me to change it. Um, we'll put this away. You guys have seen this a ton. Um, we're going to get out. I know my bit, though. You're going to get out the Jurassic, because that's probably what I'm going to carry tomorrow. Um... We'll bring out this because it always always generates comments, good or bad. Um, and what else? We'll bring out... Nope, as I drop it, that wasn't good. It's fine! Everything is fine! Bring out the Super Freak... I'll leave the other ones out. Uh, Keith says, long-term update and review on the Dalekite. You know what? You might get your wish on that. Because I want to do another long-term update. And I don't have quite enough knives to do it. You... You might get your wish on that. It'll be part of a larger long-term update video, but that's very, very possible. Um, do you do anything besides comedy and knives? What did you do before those? Um, I was, uh, uh, I guess I still technically own a cycling website. I don't really do much with it anymore. I'm just kind of a figurehead. Um, somebody else does all the writing and stuff about recumbent bikes. Um, I don't make much money off them anymore. Um, I was a sports writer before that. I was a sports broadcaster before that um and then i was in the air force for a long time uh lavender pants how do you get on said arian drop then that's not a question for me i don't think super freak i've seen people baton over that thing yeah it's a great knife i really do like it a lot a therapeutic edge i can't review the dalica it makes my other knives feel <laughs> threatened Hey, Peter, by the way, how's it going? Yeah, mine are not threatened by that thing, because all they do is hear me say bad stuff about it. Pietro Gallini says, is it a good knife? You bet your Jurassic it is. Yeah. Uh, William Tool says, thank you for your service. You're very welcome. I was in for nine years. I say I was in forever. It sounds like I retired. I didn't retire. I was in for nine years. And then I said... Nine Daka and got out. I, I I didn't. My job got really really stressful, and it got clear that I was going to be stuck in it forever. So they made that abundantly clear that the only way I could get out of my particular career field was to quit. So I did that. Uh, 
uh, Sue Shinosky says, do you think the Freak's Blade needs to be coated? Nope, that's the only downside of this knife. Just And Benchmade, period, does not trust us mere mortals with anything that's non-stainless. Any of their M4, any of their non-stainless steels are always coated. They don't trust us mere mortals without a coating on their blades. They say it's because their warranty is so inclusive that they don't want knives sent back just because they're rusty. So that's why they coat everything. That is their reasoning behind it. I don't like it. Uh, the Ryan Powers one, can't you uncoat it with acid and tinfoil? You can probably uncoat it with lots of stuff, but I have zero patience to do something like that, so it's never going to happen. I just whine about it instead. And I don't have a use. And it is a good coating. I mean, I, I haven't carried this thing in, in a, quite a while, honestly. But I did a lot when I had it, and it's not... Not there, there's scuffs you can see if you if you're looking at it up close, but um, nothing that shows up on camera. Um, G ball at the in laws for good coating. I like coatings. These are these are pretty good coatings. Uh, David Garrett, since when are you a mere mortal? I'm sorry, I've always been just a mere mortal. I'm working on it. I'm working on becoming immortal, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. I'm working on a cloning machine. Got that running in my basement. It's not working so far. It just keeps pumping out poodles. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but hopefully I can get the, the conscience transfer into a new clone body thing going. Uh, well, that's why we're watching Hercules. Yeah. Maybe I can learn something. Knife collected. We don't want it back just because it's rusty proceeds to offer to replace D2 Infidel blades for literally any reason as long as you give them some cash. Yeah, if you're just paying for it, but uh, Vic that keep standing up your funny. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, how does the Eclipse rank with the Hinders? You know what? Let me, let me go grab mine and we'll talk about that. That is not my Eclipse. That is a half track. There we go. Um... Yeah, it's this is the one I would compare it most to, um, even though they're a little smaller. And I should probably do a, a head to head, or you do a battle to the death with these two, even though it would just be more of a buyer's guide kind of thing. Um, I really do like the Eclipse a lot, um, especially this newer version. This is the buoy, so um, I can't say Bowie. People get mad at me. Um, it is the buoy. Uh, I slightly prefer the Jurassic, I think, but we'll see when I do the. Battle to the Death, which one I recommend for other people. Um, this is a little shorter blade. Um, I don't know. Compared to the XM18, which this is more comparable to because it's the same size, um, it's it's going to be harder to modify. Like, these are T6. So, like, even the standoffs and stuff, you can't really, you can't use XM18 standoffs and stuff. Fewer scale options. Not going to be as easy to mod and stuff, but, uh, I think the Ergos are probably just as good. It's a little bit slimmer. I think it's still it's a great knife. Other than like action and stuff, pretty much the same. All those kind of things. Bennett says, wish it came with something other than Bowie or Spanto. I'm sure it will. It seems like for 2021, uh, Hinder is all about these two. The Jurassic and the Bowie. So I think you're going to be seeing a lot of Jurassics and Bowies coming out. Freedom Van, I want my first Hinder to be more of an offbeat model. What should I get? Uh, XM18 Skinny. Definitely what I recommend for your first one. If you can find one, those are super cool. I recommend it to Bennett. He got one. Bennett loves it. Tell him how smart I am, Bennett. Say, Brian is a very smart dude. Uh, Mr. G in Vermont, preference between the Drift and the Waypoint. My, I sold the Drift G10 because I have a titanium one coming. He said to make he'd make sure i got one in the next drop so um i will let you know for sure when i do the comparison between the two because my g10 one wasn't really comparable to my titanium um my titanium uh, waypoint therapy judge brian is the smartest you didn't have to say it peter it's bennett needs to say it because i made him spend 400 and some dollars uh, Freedom Van, have you battled to death the waypoint versus the tactile yet? I believe I did. I believe I did. Someone tell me if I did, because I don't remember. I'm a very busy boy, and sometimes I forget things that I've done. 
Uh, but it says, yeah, I completely did not expect to be interested in Hinder until you lent me your skinny, and I bought one of my own within a week. Yep. They're very, very cool. I did. Good. Uh, Will Tool, random MCU or DCEU MCU? DC animated movies, infinitely better than Marvel animated stuff. Live action, Marvel, 100%. I don't remember what one. Because when I do these, like, you think I'd remember because, like, oh, which one do you like better? It doesn't matter which one I like better. A lot of times when I do the battles to the death, I'm trying to think about normal people. I'm not trying to think about myself. So, Ryan Powers' fire attack is awesome. The fire attack is awesome. Pretty sure the waypoint one. Pretty sure the waypoint one. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. I have a Battle Black Fire Attack, and it's fun to say as well, which is cool. It won in my mind. That's all. That's all that matters. Um, we're gonna put. Actually, we'll put the Eclipse away because we're talking about Fire Attacks. I want to bring the Fire Attack out. We don't want to have. I know that everybody knows I'm a Hinderer fan, but we can't have more than thirty percent Hinderers out here. So. One has to go, so put the Eclipse away. And bring out Battle Black Fire Attack. I love this thing. Maybe I'll carry this tomorrow. Oh yeah, it's my card of Monday. I'm gonna carry this. I was gonna carry that because I'm gonna mention it. I'm gonna carry this tomorrow. Oh, I should have not worn this watch today because that is like that's a really good combination. You guys know I like my watch and knife combo things on the interwebs. I have other brown watches though. Anything with leather on it would work. So would this. This would look really good in an Instagram picture. Right? Although this is the most Chinese of Chinese watches ever. So I don't know if I want to put that next to a hinder. I shouldn't. It's burning my hand. I shouldn't have that Chinese of an object next to a hinder. This is actually a uh, reissue of a watch that was made in 1963 for the Chinese Air Force. So it's a it's a 1960s Chinese Air Force watch. And it's freaking cool as hell. And it works great. Look at that. Look at all the stuff. It's, it's so cool. And they're like 300 bucks. And they're great. It's just called a Seagull 1963. Go get one. Um, David Garrett, you won't die if you wear a watch two days in a row. But David, I will if I put it on Instagram two days in a row. That's just, that's just a fact. That's just a fact. You can't have the watch, the same watch on Instagram two days in a row. Uh, got a bit early special family dinner. It's quite German. Good. Enjoy that. Some schnitzel, perhaps. BD Swain, new Grand Tour lockdown had a great China USA reference at the end. They did. <laughs> it was very funny. The lock lockdown, the Grand Tour lockdown was was excellent. You know what I liked about it was they didn't. You could tell they didn't have the crew and the budget for this one, so they didn't have as much shenanigans. It was just like good old. It was. It felt like Top Gear from the '90s, and I loved it. I thought it was excellent. A lot of fun. A little bit of shenanigans. A little bit of fakery, but it was mostly cool. Uh. That fellow there, don't buy a Vostok. Get a, get a Vostok instead. It's wobbly crown function. I have a Vostok, and it's broken. Uh, ben, was this just released on Prime? Yeah, the 30th. I have a Vostok that I love, and it freaking broke. And you know what you do when a Vostok breaks? You throw it away and get another one. And I haven't bothered to get another one yet. But I love Vostoks as well. They're cool. But as far as Kami watches go... I'm Seagull. This is the small 38 one because I have little tiny wrists. But they make a 42 as well if you want a bigger one. They make them in more modern color schemes, but I like the old kind of classic one. I definitely changed the um, I definitely changed the strap. William Tool, uh, feel free not to answer, but are you religious at all? Uh, yes and no. I'm Buddhist, um, which I don't consider it to be a religion. I'm a Zen Buddhist. Um, it's it's very light duty. It's mostly just about meditation. But it's the closest thing I have to one. But I do meditate 
usually twice a day. Um, so I guess I'm that's as close as I get to one. So, uh, Gregory Burke, did you get out your broom because of the shenanigans? What what broom? I don't know. Freedom fan, I really don't understand the appeal of Vostok. I do love the sequel. Vostoks are just charming. They're just like crappy and they have Russian writing all over them. And they're just cool. They're not that crappy though. They're okay. I don't know. I just really like them. They always look great. I think most Vostoks look amazing. Mine looks great. It's just very broken. It just stopped one day. I was wearing it and it just quit. I have to open it up. One of my buddies, um, uh, the Mad Watch Collector, great YouTube channel, by the way, he said, just open it up. Sometimes a part's just fallen off. <laughs> like literally sometimes like a wheel just falls off and you just have to put it back on and it comes, it starts working again. So, um, Sue Shinovsky isn't hinder a religion. No, it's a financial burden. I wouldn't call it a religion. It's a financial burden. I'm down to six hinderers now, though, and I'm quite happy with my six. So, although I want another 24, but it was too expensive to keep around. I didn't carry it enough, and with summer hitting and it's hot, I'm not going to carry it. So, I sold it. I Every summer I sell most of my big knives off, and then I get new ones over the winter. And that's how that goes usually uh, Ryan Powers Brian has his own call if you're looking for a new religion no, no it's not we're, we're trying to keep that on the down low I don't want to get raided by the FBI I don't want to have I don't want to have a whole Waco situation at my house no it's, I do have a cult it's in the discord channel I need to make a subsection for the cult um and we do admit we're a cult. We're not one of these things that say it's not a cult. It's just a, re a religion or whatever. It's This is a cult. Um, but it's Brian's super easy cult. Uh, the name changes. Uh, but you don't have to do anything. You don't have to, like, buy special sneakers. You don't have to move. You don't have to, like, wear special clothing or change your life in any way. Uh, just send me 200 bucks a month. And whenever... Whatever happens at the end of the world, I don't know what it is yet. Maybe it's, you know, Jesus in a comet. Maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe it's like reversal of the poles. I don't know. But whenever it happens, I'll text you. So you send me $200 a month and your phone number, and I'll just let you know when the thing happens. It's the easiest cult there has ever been. That's all you got to do. What's the benefit of your cult, Bill, William Tool? It's because I will let you know when the thing happens. No, there's no fruit punch, Blazeberry. There's no nothing. There's no beverages. There's no anything. Even at our meetings, there are no refreshments provided. Um, William Tool seems like a scam. That's your word. That's what you chose to call it. That's not what how me and me and my my subscribers. I'm not even calling them followers. My subscribers feel about it. That's, that's your word. That's your word for it. I didn't say that. I've heard that word before about my cult. But I'm just saying it's not a... We even put cult in the name. We don't try to hide it. We don't try to hide it. We even put it in the name. Brian's Super Easy Cult. It's very easy. I may lower the I may lower the entry fee because so far it's a very small call. It's just me. So maybe the two hundred a month is a bit ambitious, at least to start out with. Maybe I should make a level. I think I'll get kicked off a of Patreon. How many days do you think it would take me for to get kicked off a of Patreon if I made a level that says Brian's super easy cult and made it like two hundred dollars a month? <laughs> I think, I think two days, I would get kicked off of Patreon. That would be very funny. Mark Mole, depending on when the FBI gets to your door, I guess I don't. The FBI has never come after. It's it's so obviously a joke. That I don't think anybody would ever come after me for that. I would feel like the state would be a real estate would be a better investment. But I'm still on the fence. <laughs> you know. On the fence is all we ask for. You're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. 
Scotta and still cheaper than a mid-level marketing scam. Exactly. It's not that hard. It's super easy. Uh, Falkian says uh, you need a tiered system. People love moving upwards. Well, you're right. That's a that's a good that's a good call. That's a good call. Kevin Campbell is so obviously a joke that it would actually work. It might. Who knows? Uh, William Tool, there is, but it's slim. See, you're saying there's a chance. That's all I care about. So watch out. You'll get demonetized for YouTube. I don't think I'll get demonetized for that. I'm just obviously joking around about stuff. There's all kinds of true crime stuff and all that stuff. That's all we're, we're just talking about. That kind of stuff. It'll be fine. David Garrett, Scientology work. Do you have a chance? Yep. I guess, but of course you start off at the bottom level, but work hard and before long you move up to the next, the bottom level. Yeah. See you later, William Tool, and keep an eye out. We'll convert you someday. Sarcasm. No, you, you, it's a good thing to be worried about getting demonetized on YouTube now. It happens to people, but. Uh, BD Swaim, never mind. I did listen to the Everyday City podcast. That was a lot of fun. Scott and the cult of diminishing returns. No, it'll be a great return if it works out, but I'm making no promises. It's just a no promise. As as these things go, very minimal financial financial commitment. Uh, Gregory Burke, have you tried any S45 VN blade steel, which is being used by Cursory? I yes, I have had some S45 VN. I believe I have. I have one, yeah, I have one I use quite a bit. It's pretty good. It's a little better than um, uh, S35. It's 10 better than S35. I'm just being sarcastic. No, it does seem to hold an edge pretty good. I've got a uh, my Spartan um, RC 3.25 is S45. Yeah, use that a lot. I had a PM2 before that. I used a little bit. Um, but I have not gotten a, a Chris Reeve in S45. Then. They usually run their stuff a little softer. Scott and cheaper than a reverse mortgage. Hey, man, I don't not reverse mortgages. That is my retirement plan. Not to have a reverse mortgage, to promote reverse mortgages. Because I've been told that I look a lot like my dad, who I have lighter hair color than him, but he looked a lot like Tom Selleck. And I'm working on a Tom Selleck impression so that when Tom Selleck retires from doing those reverse mortgage commercials, I can just slide in. And the old people will never notice that I'm not. I don't look a lot like Tom Selleck, but enough that an old person might think I was Tom Selleck. So that's kind of my, that's my retirement plan is to slide into selling reverse mortgages. Um, the Ryan Powers one, I'm confused. Are we supposed to get into watches or don't get into watches? Get into watches, but get into watches that are in your financial means. Um... Get in like you can have cheap Casios are just as cool as having really expensive Rolexes. I have I have no Rolexes or anything like that. I've got one Omega that's pretty expensive. I have a Tag Heuer that was pretty expensive that was a gift. Um, and for what I paid for the Omega, it was practically a gift. Um, and but yeah, cheap Casios are cool. There's lots Seikos are cool. Get into watches, but get into get into watches that um, you can afford. I love my cheap Casios just as much as everything else. No mojo, your retirement plan is to keep working in commercials. I've done a couple commercials and ain't working. It's a lot of it's it's easy money. You want to take a shower afterwards, but it's easy money. Accuspug get in before the the Wilford Brimley impersonator to grab that gig. Now I want Tom Selleck's gig. He seems to get I'm sure he gets paid more. Uh Mako 401, his his retirement is YouTube bucks. <laughs> yeah, no, that is not true. The YouTube bucks ain't what they used to be. The only time I did really, really well with YouTube, unfortunately, was the height of the pandemic. I did great. Um, that was when it was like it paid my rent and everything, and that was cool. But don't don't pull that off anymore. Uh, Freedom Van, so did you get that Planet Ocean? Yes, I have uh, 11, 11 year old Planet Ocean, and I adore it. It was it's the one from the first Bond movie. 
not the first Bond movie, first Bond movie with, uh, with the, with, wow, brain fart, the new Daniel Craig, Casino Royale, it's the Casino Royale one. Bennett Wilcox, your channel just needs more videos of farting pandas. Yes, you should. Um, Scott, and did you ever get the panda flighty? I did, and it's horribly broken, and I got totally ripped off, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it, and I'm very angry about it. Um, I'm going to rebuild it someday, but it needs a whole movement replacement, and that's... I, I think I can handle replacing a movement in a watch, but I don't want my first one to be a chrono. Uh, Brian McLam, did you ever make a video with the ocean yet? No, and I, I probably won't because it's not, like not new or anything. It'll be in a collection update or something at some point. I have it over here. Hold on a second. I need to open the fancy watch case that I don't open very much. Yeah, I've got, I've got this one. It's on the rubber right now because the bracelet doesn't fit me right it's always either too loose or too tight and there's no micro adjust because it's an old one i do like about this i haven't worn this in days and i just picked it up and it already starts running i didn't wind it or anything it just starts running as soon as you pick it up um it's a great watch i really like it um i do wear it quite a bit because it's it's the right amount of beat up that it's fine but um yeah i do like it I don't even know what, in this condition, it's not an amazing condition. Um, I don't even know what it would go for. Somewhere in the high twos, probably. But I paid zero when you were near that for it. It'd be 2000 I twenty Like 2500 to 3500 probably. Um, to a Dave, has anyone bought the Marble Carbon Forge Stinger? I was very, very, very tempted, but I had to pay a bill, and I didn't do it. I probably should have, though, because I do really like the Stinger. But I have the G10 one, so you know what it is. When you got one, arm skin, LOL. You're laughing at my arm skin? I do have bad arm skin. If, if you're laughing at my arm skin, I will take that. It's very rude, but I do have... I have a skin condition. I literally do. And you just said a very nasty thing. So if you were being nasty, everybody point and call Mako a mean, mean man. Um, perhaps a new watch band is in order. No, this is an actual this is an actual Omega rubber strap. It's the it's the expensive one. It's not the cheap one. This is the, the real deal. It was a lot. <laughs> so um, I like it. No, never a nasty joke. To show more skin for my views. All right. I'm not sure I believe you. I do have. I, I have little red dots all over my skin. It's like a very low-grade eczema thing. I've had it since birth. It's just it's just weird. I love, love you too, Miko. Maybe. My arms are shaved because I'm always testing the sharpness of my blades. I don't get why that's a test we do. Why do we do that? Why I don't understand when that became a thing that people did. I don't I don't get it. This looks like normal freckles, yeah. It's weird. But I've had it my whole life. My daughter's got it too. My dad had it. It's really just kind of a Scottish thing, I think. A lot of Scottish people have it. Uh Never used the frame arms the phrase arm skin. I think I probably have before. Sharpening videos. Yeah, but like paper was fine. I don't need to see you hacking hair off yourself. It's kind of gross. I never sh I used to I never shaved my arms. I shaved my legs when I was racing mountain bikes. I shaved my legs, but I never shaved my arms. I don't think. No, I never have. Uh, Brian Lamb, I used to watch my papa shave his arm after sharpening his case double X on a wet rock. But yeah, I guess maybe that's where it came from. Connor Mitchell, I got the same thing on my arms to my mom. I always call it chicken skin for some reason. My mother called me the same thing, or called it the same thing. She didn't call me chicken skin. 
<laughs> oh my god, that'd be really chicken skin. Get your ass over here. That's not that didn't happen. But uh, and I'm suing by your name, Connor Mitchell. There's also a chance that you are Scottish or Irish descent, and I think it is a thing that we that we get. I and I I had it on my legs as well, but it went away from my legs by the time I was like 20. But it just stuck. And it's only on my forearms. It stops. It stops at like my elbows, but it's weird. Hair shaving is a better test than paper. I don't know. I, I guess. I've never been tempted to uh, to shave with a knife. I take it back. I've cut a hair or two off my face with a knife, like I missed one or something, you know. Uh, Blaze Burger. I shaved my legs once. I was asked to leave Arby's. Um, Connor Mitchell's is very likely. I have to ask about lineage. I just think because of your name, you might also be Scottish or Irish. Um, yeah, I shaved my legs because I was a cyclist, and I still don't know why we do it. I don't know why we did it. I have no idea why cyclists shave legs. There's been a whole bunch of different things that were put out as to why. I don't know. It's just what was done. And so I did it. <laughs> I don't really... Peer pressure, I think, is why. I think some at some point, some famous cyclist said, wouldn't it be funny if I shaved my legs and everybody kept doing it? And that's what happened. Everybody did do it and keep doing it. Uh, Injuries, healer. Yeah, that's one reason. So it's like, uh, like you, you get less road rash and less sticky. But it grows into the scab as it's forming, so it doesn't... You can't shave the scab, so I don't think that. People say aerodynamics. That's just horse pucky. There's no way that's a thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we all just do it. I don't think there's a reason. I know why swimmers do it. Like, swimmers, it's a quantifiable thing. Gliding through the water, they shave everything. But, I don't know. Jeff Stro, have you seen that VECP? I searched YouTube. Uh, I, mean, I don't know which VECP you're talking about. Uh, true bullions there's no leg hair equals aerodynamic yeah blaze burger triathlete preparation I don't know I've heard like six or seven different reasons I think we all just did got them waxed for a while that was a thing that was fine actually I didn't find it that painful it was alright it was just easier I just got I used to go get my legs waxed twice a week when I was actually getting paid to ride bike Ride bikes. Oh, Les George VECP. Yeah, uh, I really do want to get one of those at some point, but I've not been able to financially pull one off. That's one I'm just going to have to buy, and I ha don't I have not been able to financially pull that off. Uh, Jimmy Lillis, I'll shave to make sure it's sharp and cut paper to make sure the blade isn't any problem spots. Yep. Yeah. Um, Sue Schnosky, what about the armpits? I did that once, and it it's not comfortable unless you do it, like, all the time. It gets prickly. That's not a good place for pricklies. I let it grow back, and I haven't touched them since. I did. I did one time. Uh, bees blades. I mean, maybe a cyclist werewolf legs was getting too much drag. I don't know. Like I said, I just think that some famous cyclist did it, and everybody said, you know... Something probably ending in a vowel. Some guy, Piccolini or whatever, did it. And let's just all do that now. Wind tunnel tests are specialized. It's, did Specialized do a wind tunnel test and say it was better? I don't know. I never shaved my arms, though. I don't have much enough arm hair to worry about. But I do have very hairy legs. Uh, Miko Foran, don't shave your chest with an electric razor. So much razor burn. Yeah, I will say I've never shaved my. I did no, I did shave my chest once, but that was an eon ago. I didn't have enough to really worry about. Now I do, but um, I had for a Halloween costume a couple years ago. I was Freddie Mercury, and I was wearing a uh, a. I don't want to use the the word the the common vernacular for it, a white tank top undershirt, commonly worn. And I was dressed up like him for the Live Aid concert. And I had, I don't have a hairy back, but I had like a spot up near the top of my neck. And I had my wife shave it off. And wow, when it grew back in, that was the itchiest thing ever. I'm never doing that again. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> we've substituted so-and-so's body watch with Nair. Think he'll notice the difference? I tried Nair once. It didn't do anything. Uh, marginal gains ever see a sprint finish? I just was a really good sprinter, so I never worried about that. If it was a sprint finish, I won. That was like the only thing I was good at in road bikes. I raced mountain bikes, but on road bikes, I was an excellent sprinter. If I could, uh, if I could get within, you know, 20 yards at the finish line, I usually won. Keith, should I shave my entire body? No, you should not. Because you would not be able to resist telling us all about it and or showing us pictures, and we don't want to see that. There you go. You are still athletic in our, in our eyes. No, I'm not anymore. I'm a shell of what I used to be. Only if you do it with a Dalika free... Yeah, if you can get that Dalika sharp enough to shave hair, you have to shave all of it. <laughs> Look what you've done to yourself, Keith. Look what you've done. I hope you're happy with yourself. We're running a little late here, but everybody's having a good time. I'll keep hanging out. Uh, any tattoos? Yes, I have um, four. I guess this only counts as one. This is my kids' names on my wrist. Um, I have a uh, little logo on my left shoulder blade that I used to use. I went to art school and I used to design cars um, in art school and I had to make a logo for that. So that's on there. Do I have some paper to kind of draw? I can't show it to you. It's on my left shoulder blade. And then I have a little chunk of uh, bicycle chain on my neck. So I technically only have three tattoos, but I argue that a neck tattoo is worth four regular tattoos. And I think that's pretty indisputable. Oh, this is the... Uh, I have to send that on. I can't use that. Oh, here we go. A notebook. Look at that. It's a super freak. BD Swain. I could be MC and arm wrestling, no sweat. I could not, and I wouldn't even pretend to. But I have a thing on my left shoulder blade that looks kind of like... to move, said super freak. Can I draw a circle? very hard to uh, draw because it's very symmetrical and the tattoo artist that did it so that it was extremely difficult this is a very terrible representation of what is on my left shoulder blade it's it looks kind of like a b but it's supposed to be a b it looks like a 13 or a b or whatever but anywho that's more information than you needed uh Trip Hammett, going to get the Japanese symbol for neck, for my neck tattoo. Yeah, <laughs> TPK, yes, that is a good tattoo, man. You know, I forget that I have it. Actually, how I got my big neck, and it's not that big. It's like, it's like that big, which is pretty big for a neck tattoo, I guess. But I used to have this really, really tiny behind my left ear, my kids' names. Park, this says Parker and McKenna. It's a very stylish, fancy version of my handwriting. Um... The behind my left ear, it was my actual handwriting, and it was really tiny, and it bled out, and I got it fixed, and it bled out again, and I went to a friend of mine who was a really good tattoo artist, and he asked him to fix it again, and he said, dude, it's too small, it's not going to work, it's just going to keep bleeding out, so we covered it, and we put this bundle of bike chain behind my left ear, and then I replaced this because you can't come, you can't have your kids' names on your body, and then come home and say, "Oh, they're not there anymore. I covered it up." <laughs> you gotta, re you gotta replace it. <laughs> so, right? I mean, how would you feel if your if your father said, "I got your name tattooed on me." Oh, that's great, Daddy. That's really cool. And then you come home a couple years later and go, "I didn't work out. I got rid of it." It'd be like giving him a puppy and then taking it away. 
Uh, Mako says, I have to get a unicorn tattoo if I use fantasy football. Ice. I do not uh, make tattoo bets. Do I still carry the Swish Boo? Yes, just had it in my pocket uh, last week. I like it very, very much. And it's in a good user shape. That's why I like it. It's not... It's not like valuable. I, I restone washed it my the, the the handles myself because um, they were really beat up when I got it. Um, it doesn't have a box or anything, so ink is great. Yeah, I'm getting more. Um, I want to get my dog was an Australian my beloved cattle dog that died was an Australian cattle dog, so I want to get a um, silhouette of an Australian cattle dog in blue right there. Uh, Ryan Powers, when do you think Spider Co. would give you a sponsorship if you got a spider tattoo? No. Bennett Wilcox. Bro, you have a neck tattoo? I, yeah. I have a neck tattoo. I forget that it's there sometimes. And, like, I look in the mirror, I'm like, ah, ah. <laughs> it's like, you forget it, that it's there. Uh, Ramon Chavez pointed out my neck tattoo once because I said I didn't, wasn't sure if I was badass enough to carry around uh, oh, you're quoting Ramon. Yeah, the story is I, I went, I was, wasn't sure if I was uh, um, manly enough to carry on a knife with a skull clip on it. And I said that to him, and he said, Bro, you have a neck tattoo. And I was like, Yeah, good point, sir. Scott, and I could see getting kids' names tattooed, not spouses. My wife is with you on that. I wanted to get my wife's, like, I wanted to do the uh, wedding ring tattoos, and she said no. She thinks it's bad luck. I can spell, don't look at me. I'm scared of needles. I have to look away every time I get a vaccine shot. I don't like getting shots, but needles are... I mean, the, the tattoos are different. Luckily, all mine, the only one I could see them do was this one. And I just didn't really watch. But um, the other ones I couldn't see if I wanted to, so... Free State fell. I forget about my back piece, because I... I rarely see it. Yeah, same with my neck tattoo. It's it's like kind of halfway behind my ear, so I don't really notice it all the time. It's usually just when I'm shaving and I turn my head that way. And I'm like, oh, geez, I forgot I have that. David Garrett, I have commitment issues, so I can't do tattoos. Yeah, you got to put a lot of thought into them. That's absolutely for sure. What's the brewer wasn't here? It's actually gone. But it was, I guess there's one swell left. It was Hamburger, Hamburger, <laughs> Hamburg Brewing Company Lakeview Lager, but it's gone now. Uh, Scott, when did you get the Slicey Dicey logo? No, I don't get, I never got the logo of my old business either. And I'm glad I don't have it anymore. I mean, I'm glad I don't have it because it's, you get a logo of a business and then if it fails, it's just a constant reminder that you failed at something. You go hinder a logo, be cool for him to get. I don't think I'll ever get any business logo. Um, I don't see that happening. Hamburger beer. Mm. Hamburger bacon beer. Yeah, I don't like logo tattoos at all. Because then it becomes like, what if what if that company does something terrible? Then you have a their logo tattooed on you. See? Commitment issues. No, I'm just not going to get... I get stuff that means something to me. Vic for that, you sound frustrated with how I continue your channel. I hope you're in a good mind space. We enjoy your kind. No, I'm definitely going to keep it going. I don't really have a choice whether to or not. Um, I'm definitely going to keep doing it, and I'm still really enjoying it. It's just the numbers aren't what they were, and I'm not 100 percent sure why. So I'm um, going to keep trying stuff and figure stuff out until it uh until it gets back up to the growth that it used to be. I'm not, um, I'm not frustrated with it. It's just kind of, I just don't get why. And it's not just me. It's every knife channel except MC is, uh, not doing well at all. And I think it's a Google thing and I don't know if there's anything we can do about it or not, but we'll see. Uh, a Ferrari cresting your forehead. If I got any company logo, it'd be a Ferrari logo, but it wouldn't be on my forehead. Uh, what about a tramp stamp? What's your stance on them? Uh, not a, not a giant fan. Not for, de definitely not for dudes. 
Sue Shinovsky, they'll always be your children. I have my son's signature on my right wrist. Yeah, exactly. You get tattoos of your kids' names because they'll always be there. I don't think my wife's going anywhere. I'm pretty happy with this one. I think everything's going to be fine, but she didn't want to do the wedding ring things. Key says, if I were to get a tattoo, it would be on the back of my neck and shoulder and be the American flag underneath, say, made in the USA. But are any of us really made in the USA? Bennett Wilcox says, a boring year in knife releases probably isn't helping the view counts. It is definitely not, Bennett. And that is one thing that gives me solace. I just don't have, like, all the new releases to, like, promote and get huge, huge um, views for because there aren't any. So, Kevin Campbell, I have a Hello Kitty tattoo, no joke. Actually, one tattoo I do want to get that's really close to that is um, my daughter... Oh, where is it? Uh, I can't get it off the wall to show it to you. It's a Zuzu pet. And uh, my daughter had a Zuzu pet coloring book. And it had a little Zuzu pet doing stand-up. And it says, I tell jokes at the bottom of it. And she colored it for me and gave it to me when she was nine, maybe. I would get that. I want to get that Zuzu pet tattoo. Because it's, it's a beautiful little thing my daughter gave me. It's framed and it's up in my office. But See you later, Ryan Powers. I'm glad, I'm glad you had some laughs. I heard that someone the other night said that I wasn't funny on their live show. So I haven't gone to see it yet, but I heard that they were quite rude about me. So, uh, yeah, that, that, whatever. Good for them. Might want to get a few more subscribers before you start talking smack about everybody, but that's just kind of my thought. Um, great tat story. appreciate it. Uh, I guess, but, uh, regarding tattoos, ever see the movie Periscope, Down Periscope? I have not. Uh, thank you very much, Bees Blades. Appreciate it. I was rude. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say their names. People I've been very, very nice to for a very long time, and then they were very, very. They decided to make fun of everyone, and I guess most of it was lighthearted. But I've been told that when they got to me, it was not lighthearted, and I have not seen it. But I know it. Went around about me and my uh, me and uh, not being funny and not being a comedian, and they were yeah. You know, talk about my channel. Don't. Don't talk about my job and stuff that you don't know a damn thing about. Don't do that. So, uh, were they here tonight? No. I know exactly why they're mad. Because I moved my show back. And now I overlap them. So, whatever. Uh, my husband has a leg sleeve. I think it should be called a sock. It should be called a sock. Do they call them leg sleeves? Huh. David Garves. I haven't seen it because I'm not a subscriber for a while. BD Swaim, don't go there. Yeah, you were the you were the first one that pointed it out to me and asked me to roast them, and I'm like, no, nah, I like them. They're great people. I didn't know anything about this until you said that, and then I got a bunch of messages like the next day after that, giving me kind of a transcript of what they said, and I was like, whatever, it's fine. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't see the point and when you're still a small growing channel to just go after everybody it doesn't seem like a good thing to do that i've been nothing but nothing but nice to them nothing but nice i moved my show for six months and i encouraged you guys to go watch their show and that won't happen again uh Chef Boy Arby says, um, just arrived. Have you seen the new Olight knife? Uh, no, I, I may have seen it. I've not reviewed it. No. Um, but, and I don't, if somebody sends me one, I will. I'm not going to buy it. It wasn't anything that really like, uh, thrilled me too much. Um, yeah, I don't. Looks kind of like a QB, doesn't it? I think it just looks like a QB. It may be perfectly nice, but it looks like any old QB. Uh, 
Um, yeah. This, are you taking off, Vic? I take it by that. So, um, Free State Fellow, thank you very, very much for the donation. I very much appreciate it. All right, Mass Effect ain't going to play itself. <laughs> Have a good night. Yes, it ain't going to play itself. That's not how it works. Uh, Chef Boy Arby, do you carry a multi tools with you? Yeah, a couple. I have um, a Leather and Style CS on my keys. Um, actually, I have a funny multi tool thing to talk about. But um, the one I use the most, um, I don't carry this a ton, but I do when I'm actually know I'm going to need it. Uh, I have a Leatherman 3 P4. And then I used to always carry a Leatherman Juice on my keys, and they kept coming off. And. Um, my wife found one of my Leatherman squirts buried in the, in the dirt alongside the driveway. So I'm going to try and restore this. So, yeah, I'm thinking the first step is lots of WD-40, I think. And then we'll see how it goes from there. We'll see how it goes from there. Um, do you think the knife watch hobby is inherent, is inherently economically and subsequently age prohibitive? Um, I can see, <laughs> Rab, they block, I can, I guess I can kind of see why YouTube blocked that when you said squirt's a really handy tool. You're just talking about the Leatherman squirt, but I can see why YouTube would be confused by that one. Um, do you think the knife watch hobby is inherently economically and subsequently age prohibitive no because i think both in the knife and watch hobby i think um there are entry level price stuff that real knife people and real watch people think are equally cool you know um because like i said cheap casios are cool uh if you have a bunch of civivis and stuff we still think that's cool it doesn't, you don't have to have the ridiculously expensive stuff to still be a knife collector. You don't have to have really expensive stuff to be a watch collector. You just have to stay within your means, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, Blaze Burger Threat? I don't think I threatened anybody. Are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Now I sound like I just threatened somebody. Uh, Chef Boy Arby, I can already hear Nick saying, Do not get into watches. No, it's it's not at all. Do not. I, I don't say do not get into watches. I say only get into the watches you can afford. If you don't have a lot of money, then get into. But you're interested in timepieces. You're interested into. I, I like saying horology, horology. Um, you get by by twenty dollar Casios. Uh, Trip Hemet, do you like Hamilton watches? I had one. I had a Khaki King, but I got the the champagne one i shouldn't have i should have got the black one if i got the black one i'd probably still own it but i sold it and bought a seiko alpinist in black instead gregory burke where is your excalibur oh my sword is not not within reach at the moment uh sue do they still make swatches yes they do uh, Thick Quacker, uh, Swatch actually owns everyone now. Swatch Group owns Omega, they own Hamilton, they own, like, every, they own a lot, a lot, a lot of, they're a huge, giant conglomerate company now. But they do still make a few under the Swatch name, yeah. Uh, Thick Quacker, did you see today's F1 race? I did, it was nutso, and now they disqualified Vettel afterwards. Spoiler alert, sorry. He didn't leave enough gas in his car for them to test it? So after the race, he got DQ'd. Um, you like your knife, we like your knife. Exactly, Blazeburger. That's all that matters. Uh, Trip Emmett says, if you can get a good price on I love my titanium khaki field. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my Seiko SRPG field watch. I'm, I'm kind of, I think my field watch thing is 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 satisfied. I do really, really like the Hamilton Chronos, though. I think they're beautiful. I've seen them in person, and I just think they're freaking gorgeous. But two grand is way more than I can afford at the moment. 
but very quality company and great history. They're not American, you know, owned anymore. They're owned by Swatch Group, but um, they have a great history of, you know, making U.S. military watches and stuff. They're technically a Swiss company now, but they still have that great history, which is cool. See you later, ID Wolverine. Chef Boy Arby, have you seen the Kershaw capsule? Oh, yeah, that thing's really cool, the manual OTF. Yeah, I really, I'm going to get my hands on one of those for sure. I think there will be a lot of those for sale at, like, big box stores here in New York because it's going to be a legal OTF in New York. I think there will be a lot of them for sale up here. Well, we've got almost two hours. I should probably wrap this thing up. I'm out of beer. I'm just having a good time tonight chatting, so... Um, Seiko makes solid watches. Yes and no. I mean, I'm a huge Seiko fan. I'm the biggest Seiko fan in the world, but uh, they're not perfect. They are far less, far less than perfect. Uh, BD Swain says, sent five on PayPal. Don't trust YouTube. Thank you very much, BD. I appreciate it. Love my SKX 007. I have a 009. It's pretty cool. Um, never be out of beer. I know. I, I keep wanting to get a refrigerator up here, but my wife won't let me because she said she'd never see me. It's probably not inaccurate, but uh, it was really good fun hanging out tonight. This was this was one of the more fun I've had on the live show in a while. So thank you very much. Things didn't get too insane. I don't have to worry about getting demonetized. And it's been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it. See you next Sunday when it will not be this long. And there may be a special episode in the middle of the week sometime. So keep an eye out for that. I've been Brian. Have a good one.